So now let me introduce David Sternberg. He is our social media manager here at Human Intelligence to talk about a real example where um, just the type of products you use in recruiting can lead to a more diverse workplace without ever having to think about diversity but because it's built into the process. Go ahead, David. Hi, everybody. I'm going to be tackling in diversity of gender specifically today, and I wanted to address what Juan just said about offering inclusivity leading to diversity. So if you're offering an inclusive environment, you're going to have people coming in that want to stay. A great example of that is when you're taking data from possible candidates and you have them fill out their gender, race, et cetera. If you're only offering a male and female binary system for somebody checking off their gender, that would automatically be a problem to me. And I really would not give that company a lot of thought in staying there. Juan also just mentioned millennials possibly leaving after they join. That's just unappealing to me and shows that the company is outdated on the wrong set of history. Now, after you offer those options to have different boxes to check off, you have to show that you're not just offering them to have them, that you actually care about them. Validate the people and the choices that they pick. Right at the bottom of the screen, you'll see my results from taking the human intelligence assessment. I got creative, maverick, and go-getter. And you can see that the business persona animations have a mix of male and female presenting individuals. This is because when I did check off the box, I chose human intelligence's third option, which is gender non-conforming. And you can show that it's not just a box, they actually care about it by presenting you with results that match what you chose, which might seem like a small thing if you are cisgendered or cishet, but it actually shows that human intelligence cares about who's using their software and they wanna reflect whoever's taking it so they can see themselves in their results. You can go to the next slide and we'll see that there are a plethora of animations, not just male, female, white, black. They've really chosen enough caricatures to showcase whoever's taking this. So when you are offering these options, I also want you to check your motivations so that you know, you know it's not just a box because your motivations for diversity are going to show through your actions. A great way to show this through actions is by asking questions when necessary. So if you do have an employee that shows a third gender option that you're not familiar with, ask them a question about it specifically, ask them their pronoun. And a small microaggression that I would address is not asking somebody their preferred pronouns, but they're just pronouns because they aren't really preferred, they're what that person uses. Be open to they, them, which is something that's new and might be more millennial than the boomer generation. And then if you're not doing this, I want you to encourage your culture to evolve by implementing these different strategies because if you are fostering a safe and inclusive environment, people are going to want to stay there and be inclined to tell their friends to come and even seek out companies that have these options. So overall, you'll be able to have a more diverse workforce and diverse candidate pool just by offering these kind of basic inclusivity options to have.